The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Bacella, Director of Client Success at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to a professional's guide to smarter investing, expert strategies for a proven edge. Presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics. A Wall Street trader, stockbroker, and analyst for more than 40 years, Mark created the Chaken Power Gauge, a proven 20-factor model that uniquely combines fundamental and technical factors. This webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to all registrants. Please submit your questions via the GoToWebinar chat window. We will hold a brief Q&A session following Mark's presentation. Now to get us started, here's Mark Chaken. Thank you, Joe, and welcome everybody. Uh, this afternoon's webinar will zero in on a very disciplined methodology which is extremely important in the volatile markets that we've been experiencing, particularly when that volatility manifests itself on the downside. So why Mark Chaikin? And I think there's some very relevant answers. I've been on Wall Street for 50 years. I've survived 10 bear markets. And for 45 years, I've been using technical analysis combined with fundamental analysis. We're going to get into that in the body of the webinar. Very important. I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors. And because of what I've learned from them, I've created the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, a 20-factor quantitative model, which is really the culmination of my life's work. I began my career on Wall Street at a fundamentally oriented firm named Shearson Hamill. It was probably the best fundamental research firm on Wall Street. They had 40 analysts, a number of the People went on to form very successful hedge funds. And I was mentored by uh, Don Cecil and Walter Mintz, who founded Cumberland Associates, which is still going strong today, 40 years later. I then went to a regional brokerage firm called Tucker Anthony and RL Day, where I headed up their options department. And I started using technical analysis along with options information to create more profitable option strategies for their 20 branch offices. And there again I was mentored by a gentleman named Stanley Burge who was the first quantitative analyst on Wall Street. He's the first guy who really focused on the math and the numbers to come up with market opinions and sector opinions. And then I joined the infamous Drexel Burnham Lambert uh, where I was there unofficial technical analyst. The reason I say unofficial is they didn't want to hire a market technician to get in the way of their junk bond deals. But because of that status, I got to work with one of the two best quantitative databases on Wall Street. Started by a gentleman named George Douglas who did the original research on earnings surprise and earnings estimate revision. And those are two of the factors in the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. Uh, I left Drexel Burnham to form my own institutional brokerage firm with a partner in Philadelphia. And when we sold that two and a half years later to Reuters, I started Instant at Research, which was a six-person quantitative research department to serve, service Instant at 2,200 institutional clients. And there I pulled together everything I had learned in the course of my career to create quantitative research based on technicals, fundamentals, and sentiment. I've been fortunate that since we started Chaikin Analytics, we've been quoted in Barron's and Forbes, appeared on CNBC and Fox Business, and we've gotten a lot of good, solid validation for the intellectual property or the techniques that we're going to describe to you in this webinar. So in the next hour, you're going to learn a very disciplined methodology which will serve you well in volatile markets. You're going to find out how to find bullish and bearish stocks with a combination of the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, which really measures the fundamental potential of a stock, and Chaikin Relative Strength, which tells you what the market's thinking about a stock. We're going to focus on strong and weak sectors and industry groups, and then show you how to put this all to work to improve your trading and your investing. Now, because the market has been so volatile and mainly to the downside in a very, very historic way, uh, 2016 has started out 
as the weakest first two weeks of any year in history in the stock market. I thought we uh, could all benefit because I know in um, our customer support department we're getting a lot of questions about the market. People are obviously uh, concerned. So I would ask you the question that what are your primary concerns right now? Uh, are you concerned about whether to raise cash in your portfolio, whether to stay the long term? If you're a trader, are you uh, focused on good entry points? Um, are you primarily on the long side or the short side? Just type in a couple of key buzzwords so we know what you're thinking and can address some of that both in the presentation and in the QA. And Joe, if you could just read off a couple of those themes as you see them coming in, I'll keep uh, talking till you get a little bit of a feel. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. I've called 2016 the year of living dangerously. Uh, it's going to be very um, affected in terms of the stock market by the future course of interest rate hikes, the decline of the last two weeks uh, means that interest rate hikes are not a given, certainly not the four that people are fearing, but perhaps one or two only. Uh, commodity prices are obviously a big and dangerous uh, factor for the stock market. We're tied at the hip to oil prices. Today's action was clear cut in that regard. When oil rallied, Above $30 a barrel, the stock market opened very strongly. When it dropped below 30, the stock market went down to pretty much break even. Uh, rallied again, and then the price of crude oil dropped and closed below $29 a barrel. I think it was 28.43, and the stock market tore, uh, took a second swoon. So clearly, commodity prices are going to affect stock prices this year, at least in the first quarter. Uh, a stronger weak dollar, and right now it's strong. Uh, will have a big impact on corporate earnings because the big multinational companies get hurt when the dollar is strong and internal breadth divergences and we're going to get into some of that in terms of the check and proprietary indicators whether or not the bulk of stocks are participating in the market and finally strong and weak sectors are going to have a big impact on how you make or lose money in 2016 as they always do so Joe what are some mm -hmm. of people's uh, pain points right now or concerns? I'm will. seeing two main themes. Uh, first is where do I put cash? Um, I'm sitting mostly on cash right now and I don't know really what to do with it. The other is preservation of capital. Well, well, if you're sitting on cash, that's just great because we have been cautious in our weekly market insights. Um, and so that is a, a, a dilemma. Do I put it to work here? Do I sit on it? Uh, and capital preservation, we're going to show you how the power gauge rating can help you preserve capital by pinpointing the stocks that are most vulnerable in your portfolio and um, encouraging you to sell them. But first, let's look at the stock market. And when I look at the stock market, I always look at the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is no longer representative. It's 30 stocks, and they um, keep monkeying around with the various components and constituent stocks, but the S&P 500 represents the mid to large cap universe. So what's been happening in the stock market in 2016? Well, to know that, let's look back a little and see what happened in 2015. The market peaked in May of 2015, and then it made a number of attempts to penetrate the 2130 area, which was the peak in the S&P 500, 2137 to be exact, but the, I think the closing eye was 2130. And it failed to do that. And right there in the middle of the chart with the red box, in June and July, the market made attempts at new highs, got overbought, and shaken money flow, which we'll explain in the presentation, although I know many of you have followed shaken money flow for years. It's available on all the uh, discount brokerage platforms like Think or Swim or Options House or Schwab and also on places like uh, stockcharts.com basically measures institutional money flowing in and out. I'm going to teach you to please stay a very, very powerful pattern that we've been teaching institutional investors for 30 years since we created Shake and Money Flow uh, in the early 1980s. Um, Chaken money flow normally fluctuates from red to green. When you get a market rally like you did in 
June and July and money flow stays negative, that's telling you that the big money is not participating in that rally. It's taking advantage of the strength to sell into it. And we're looking here at the Spider ETF, the most actively traded instrument uh, in the U.S. markets that represents the S&P 500 index. So after this period where the institutions were selling the market, we got that big waterfall decline on August 24th, 5th. I've been calling that Market Order Monday because so many people panicked with the futures down a thousand points heading into the opening on the Dow Jones averages that they put in market orders, particularly in ETFs, and we learned that market orders on ETFs on panic days are really a two-edged sword that can cut very deep. Um, now, how do you know not to put in market orders? Well, um, my colleague John Schlitz writes our morning insights and tells you what's happening pre-market. So you don't have to stay glued to CNBC to know that the futures are down dramatically and the stock market's going to open down dramatically. Now, after that first leg down, we form what's known as a W bottom. The, the previous W bottom had been four years earlier in October of 2011. Every rally subsequent to 2011 came off what's known as a V-shaped bottom. And that's why buy the dips was the operative strategy on CNBC and uh, we felt the same way. But this waterfall decline on very heavy volume uh, took the market down more than 10% from its all-time high set in May. Markets that drop more than 10% typically require a W formation. The letter W is that sharp decline we had in August, the rally up, and notice on that very sharp rally up from 1867 on the S&P cash index to over 2000, a pretty uh, steep advance of over 140 points in just about two weeks, uh, the money flow, check and money flow stayed negative. That was a sign that the big money was not participating in that rally. Short covering, a little bit of trader activity, but the big institutions didn't buy it. So the market then came back down, tested the lows. On the cash index, they actually equaled the lows because of that wild selling on August 24th in the ETFs across the board. Uh, you didn't have to go down to that very, very low level. But notice what happened on the way back up the institution started participating now that you had formed a W bottom and that's represented in the check and money flow. So we rallied all the way back to 2100 and the market ran into resistance in the very same place that it was running into resistance all through the summer and money flow started to deteriorate and we got what we call our relative strength sell signals on the S&P and now we've had another waterfall decline. Uh, today was a highly volatile day. We went down all the way to 1860 on the S&P. The key level is 1870, the closing low in August and September. As long as we hold that level on a closing basis, the market is in an ugly, panic, pessimistic, corrective phase. Now, the final piece of information on this chart is what we call our power bar. The check and power bar for any list, industry group, ETF, or market index tells you the number of stocks with bullish, neutral, and bearish power gauge ratings. Now, right now, as of last night's close, 45 stocks in the S&P only had bullish ratings versus 149 with bearish ratings. And that negative power bar differential has been the case since April. And we'll see what that means in, in the next two slides. So in 2016, one of the big questions people are asking is, will small caps regroup? Because small caps have been decimated. Here we're looking at the IWM iShares Russell 2000 ETF. Weak power bar, 196 bullish stocks, 453 bearish. When I took this chart earlier today, even when the market was up, the Russell was down a half of 1%. At the same time I took it, the S&P was up half of 
So how do we know to avoid the small caps early enough to make a difference and preserve capital? Well, in July, our unique relative strength indicator with that yellow zigzag, which compares every instrument in the 5,000 stocks that we follow in Chaikin Analytics to the S&P 500, to the spider, went from outperforming to underperforming. We call that a personality change, and we're going to show you how to use that in individual stocks and sectors and ETFs like this. So since July, the small cap stocks have been underperforming the market. They also formed a W bottom, but that bottom has been broken in this big waterfall decline of the last two and a half weeks. It was a weak rally to start with. Relative strength to the broader market, has to the large cap stocks, has stayed negative and money flow has turned very negative. So it's very important to realize that in order for the market to make any headway on the upside, the majority of stocks have to fall in line. Now in the old days you had the general, they, they used to say on Wall Street, the foot soldiers have to follow the generals for the market to move up. Now, the reason they said that was General Motors, General Electric, all these big companies with the word general in them that were representative of the U.S. economy. So in this current market climate from April through now, the generals have been leading, and by that we mean those FANG stocks they talk about on CNBC, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, but the soldiers, the even in the S&P, Forgetting the Russell 2000, which are the 2000 small cap stocks, in the S&P, the weakest um, stocks have been the stocks with the lower market capitalization. So here up on the screen, I have an ETF called the Guggenheim Equal Weighted S&P 500. The symbol is RSP. Now, we have a unique analysis using relative strength that shows that since May, the equal weighted S&P has been underperforming the capitalization weighted S&P, which is what the spider represents. Now, what does that mean? It means that the large stocks, large cap stocks, the largest cap stocks, which have a big influence on the price of the S&P 500 index, did relatively well in 2015. In fact, of the strongest stocks in 2015, you had Netflix, Amazon, Starbucks, very, very large cap names that perform very well. But as you got further down the list of the 500 largest cap stocks in America, performance was not very good. So the soldiers were not following the generals. And that's very important. So we have two clues as to why the market had trouble getting through 2100 on the upside and is having such Jitters on the downside. The Russell 2000 small cap index has been underperforming the market, and even within the S&P 500 itself, the smallest cap stocks have been doing poorly. And one could say that the average stock is already in a bear market. I hate labels because they're very arbitrary, but we do get asked all the time, are we in a bear market? What should we do? Should we adjust our strategy? The bottom line is the average stock is down almost 30% from its 52-week high. Whether you look at small, mid-cap, or large-cap stocks, the average stock is in a bear market. It's these large stocks like Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Netflix that have kept the S&P 500 from moving into that 20% decline that characterizes a bear market. So that's the picture that we're facing in the early part of 2016. Should you be buying these lows, putting cash to work? Should you be sitting on your hands? The answer is a mix of both, but certainly it's a time to be more cautious, and we, we have been more cautious in our market letter than any time since we started writing it almost uh, three and a half years ago. And the reason is that the internal breadth measurements are weak. We broke support levels coming down from 2100 when we broke 2000, when we broke 1950. Uh, these are going to prove to be formidable resistance levels on the way back up. 
But you have a tool at your disposal called the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, which can help you find the most vulnerable stocks and also help you find the stocks where you can make money on the upside if you want to put capital to work. We call it the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. It's very simple. looks like the gas gauge on your car, but it's a powerful predictor of future price movement. I've said before in these webinars that the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And the reason I say that goes back to the mentoring and the experience that I had working with successful institutional investors over a 25-year period. I learned from them what they look at before they make investment decisions. And make no mistake, if you use technical analysis, you've got a very good set of tools. But be mindful that institutional investors who drive the market primarily rely on fundamental factors. Whether they do traditional fundamental analysis, whether they're quantitatively driven like the Chaikin Power Gauge is, whether they're earnings driven like a Jim Cramer, they look at these fundamentals. And I distilled these 20 factors down from 200 in a very, very intense research project based on what I had learned watching over the shoulders of the most successful institutional investors because my mission in our previous company that we sold to Reuters was to teach institutional investors how to use technical analysis as part of the decision-making project. Along the way we've grown and the Chaikin power gauge is meant to represent all the fundamental factors that drive a stock. So we've grouped them into four components, financial metrics, which is what Warren Buffett would look at, or 35% of the model. The model is 85% fundamental and 15% technical, but it finds a lot of ways to like a stock. It's an eclectic model. So the financial metrics are the bedrock of the model. They don't change that often. Earnings, Something that Jim Cramer would look at, earnings surprise. We see it every day during earnings season. Uh, Netflix reported after the close. I think they reported slightly better than expected earnings, but the revenues were a little bit light and the stock is trading higher. They are clearly more volatile factors. Technical is 15% of the model, but all proprietary, and they sort of keep the model honest. Part of the reason I've survived 50 years on Wall Street is because I have what I call a reality-based approach to investing, which means you've got to combine fundamentals with technicals to really get the full picture. Now, for most of us, we don't have the time to do fundamental analysis. Time is really our most precious commodity. How many of you have enough time to research five or ten stocks in a given week and still enjoy your family, vacations, or whatever work you have to take home or emails you have to answer. If you have the time to research five or ten stocks in a given weekend, please type Y into the question box or N if you feel you don't have enough time. And Joe, I'm guessing that we're seeing a lot of no's in there. Mostly no's. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Even if you knew what factors to look at, you could go to Yahoo Finance, Finviz, Google Finance, flip through all the pages for a given stock. It would take you two hours to do it. And you have to know how to evaluate earnings estimate revisions to the upside versus high price to sales ratio, which is a very dangerous metric. If you pay too much for a dollar of revenue, which is what has happened to a lot of the cloud computing stocks and some of the high flyers that have fallen in the solar energy area, you're on a high wire without a safety net. So even if you had the time, you couldn't do more than one or two stocks. When we first launched the product, we got instant feedback from someone who said, it used to take me two hours to research a stock, and Chaikin does it for me in seconds. One of our wealth management clients, we have both individual investors and traders and professionals who use our product uh, is with Morgan Stanley and she said Chaikin has given me back my weekend. She used to spend eight to ten hours a week doing research to supplement Morgan Stanley's research. She now uses Chaikin Analytics 
and she really has gotten her weekend back. So 20 factors, eclectic model, but the power gauge rating has proven itself in the four years that it's been commercially available. So a couple of slides to validate the performance of the model, and why am I f so focused on that? The reason is simple. I want you to come away from this webinar believing that there is a discipline methodology that can help you avoid being swayed by the headlines and the talking heads on CNBC, and that that discipline methodology has a sound basis. That sound basis starts with the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. It's the centerpiece of every product that we have and everything we do at Chaikin. So here's the performance of the model including the back-tested and the real-time results. Now, back-tested results are always good. Nobody ever gets on a webinar and says, here's a chart of our results. They back-tested poorly, but I'm sure it's going to start working someday soon. But the fact is that the real-time results have been terrific since January of 2011 when we launched the product. This model goes back to 1999. We've got a little typo on there. Since launch uh, in 2011, here's the track record. Actually, this doesn't include the back-tested performance. I actually I, I changed it because I wanted it to reflect what happened in real time, what people could have done with the model. So the very bullish stocks have been up 13% on average. These are the 428 very bullish stocks in the Russell 3000. And the very bearish stocks have been up only 1.6% in a period where the average stock has been up 8%. Prior to the 2011, the average stock was up over 20% with a very bullish rating, and the average stock with a very bearish rating was down 2%. So these are the real results that you might have achieved if you were following the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. It's that difference between very bullish and very bearish that is the real edge that Chaikin gives you. And believe me, to trade options, swing trade, or invest in your 401k plan, you need an edge. You're competing with the biggest and smartest and brightest institutional investors, and you need an edge to successfully make money in those three venues. Now, what did the Chaikin Power Gauge do in that very difficult year of 2015? Well, the very bullish stocks were down a little over 1%, but look at the very bearish stocks, down 17%. Chaikin helps you avoid disasters. And that's a really important defensive trait that I think is going to be very necessary in 2016 because it's setting up as a pretty difficult year for investors. And even if we don't go into a bear market, inevitably we will. And the Chaikin Power Gauge rating, by the way, the average stock, because the Russell is also capitalization weighted, was down almost 8% in 2015. So the very bullish stocks did a lot better than the average stocks, and the very bearish stocks did a lot worse. And it's that spread, again, that makes the difference. Now, one final proof point, and then we'll get into the meat of the webinar, which is to show you how to use the Chaikin Power Gauge to make money and avoid losers. We formed a partnership with NASDAQ in April of 2014. They had spent about five months stress testing and evaluating the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. And they were sufficiently impressed that they came back to us and said, we want you to create three co-branded NASDAQ Chaikin indexes. We have a large cap, small cap, and dividend achievers index. And we'd like you to apply the Chaikin methodology and come up with a subset of those large and small and dividend indexes that can outperform them. Use your magic, in essence. So on April 1st of 2014, we, land, we launched three NASDAQ Chaikin power indexes. Now, there was a big gotcha in here. We had been telling people that the Chaikin power gauge rating had predictive value three to six months out and that it was appropriate for options traders, for swing traders, and for intermediate to long-term investors. 
because we used to get the question, well, I'm an options trader. What does three months to six months have to do with what I do? Well, the very fact is that a stock that's going to outperform the market over the next six months doesn't do it in one big leap. I mean, occasionally it does if there's a takeover bid. But the typical stock that outperforms the market does it day in and day out. So the best stocks for the next three to six months are also the best stocks to trade from the long side in your options account. But the NASDAQ requirement was even more rigorous. They said, once you create that index, you can't change anything for a year. It's a buy and hold index because we rebalance our indexes only once a year. So with that daunting task at hand, we used the Chaikin methodology, overlaid the power gauge rating and some other factors on their indexes, and on the screen right now are the results of that power gauge performance creating the NASDAQ Chaikin indexes. All three of the indexes in the 21 months through year end, because it was rebalanced on April 1st of 15, have outperformed their underlying NASDAQ benchmarks. In the case of the small cap, which we'll look at in a minute, the NASDAQ small cap 1500, which is similar to the Russell 2000, was actually down 3.5% in that 21-month period, and the NASDAQ Chaikin U.S. small cap index was up 4.5%. That's a big difference. If you can turn a losing year into a winning portfolio, you've accomplished a lot. So here's what that looks like. You can quote these on Google and Yahoo Finance and CNBC. Here's the comparison chart of the NASDAQ Chaikin index versus the underlying benchmark, which is the NASDAQ 1500. And you can see the outperformance. Uh, this is taken from Google Finance. But here's the final proof point. We referred earlier to our power bar. For the Russell 2000, which equates to the NASDAQ 1500, right now 196 stocks had bullish ratings and 453 had bearish ratings. Look over to the left to the NQUS CHK power bar, the NASDAQ small cap Chaikin power bar. Only 10 stocks of the 215 that we picked using this very disciplined methodology that we're going to look at right now have seen their power gauge ratings turn bearish, and that's nine months in. They were rebalanced on April 1st of 15. So what does that mean to you? It means that you can have confidence of the staying power of the power gauge bullish ratings. And it means that bearish ratings, as we saw from the performance, really indicate stocks that you should avoid. And that's part of the reason that spread between bullish and bearish is part of the reason that the NASDAQ Chaikin power indexes have outperformed their benchmarks. Now, what is the Chaikin analytics methodology? <clears throat> it's encapsulated in this pyramid. For the pyramid, Chaikin power gauge ratings. It's our go-to indicator. We're looking for very bullish stocks if we want to be long, and we're avoiding very bearish stocks. But we also like to look at industry and sector strength and weakness. And we have a unique way of doing that, which is our second point in our very disciplined methodology. We want to be in strong industry groups on the long side and avoid weak industry groups. At the bottom of the pyramid are two only technical indicators. Both proprietary, Chaikin Money Flow, which you can find pretty much anywhere, and Chaikin Relative Strength, which is proprietary to Chaikin Analytics products. And they work very well with the fundamental power gauge rating. That's why I say I've got a reality-based approach to investing that I'm preaching that combines fundamentals with technicals. In the middle, buy and sell signals. Six pairs of buy and sell signals to help timing. So if you're an options trader, timing is absolutely critical. And we've got a variety of signals that have proven themselves over the last three years to be effective at finding low risk entry and exit points. So the first step in this discipline methodology, which really is required in a volatile market. If you don't have a discipline in a volatile market, you're like a leaf in a hurricane. You're going to be blown any which way. If you're following a discipline methodology, you won't necessarily make money all the time, but if you repeat that process over and over again, 
you're going to make money consistently year in and year out. So the first step is to find bullish and bearish stocks with a combination of the Chaikin power gauge rating and Chaikin relative strength. In order to accomplish that, we've identified a pattern that we call classic Chaikin bulls. They're what you should be looking for if you're putting money to work on the long side. Simple three steps. Power gauge rating is bullish. Stock is outperforming the market. And the Chaikin money flow is green, not red, indicating that institutions are buying the stock, not selling it. So we're using Activision Blizzard, which, by the way, was one of the strongest performers. It was the third best performer in the S&P 500 last year, up 94%. And what's most significant is that the Chaikin power gauge rating turned bullish early in 2015 with the stock at around $21 on its way to 40 now, along the way, so we have the power gauge rating at the bottom there, day by day, week by week, tells you at a glance whether the power gauge rating would have helped your trading or your investment style. This has to work for you and your style. Right above that is the relative strength indicator. Here's where you start combining technicals with fundamentals. And the phrase I use is that when relative strength to the market for a given stock is green, indicating that it's outperforming the market, and the Chaikin power gauge rating is bullish, the market is agreeing with the model. And that's really important because when that happens, you tend to get price acceleration on the upside. And then you see Chaikin money flow, and the signals in this case are oversold buy signal, a really simple signal. These are all on our website. And they're fully disclosed in terms of how they're constructed. So I can tell you that I, I borrowed this from a gentleman named Larry Williams, who's been a mentor to me through his books on accumulation and distribution. And Larry Williams says that if a stock you like, which is in an uptrend, makes a new eight-day low, it's buyable. Is it a pinpoint indicator? No. But for... Swing traders or options traders looking for low risk entry points that may last five to 10 days, this and our money flow indicator are excellent entry points. They work about two thirds of the time. And you can see over on the right here that the last signal worked for a couple of days. It came at 35 and the stock rallied to 37 and a half. But with the pervasive selling we've seen in the market, uh, the market dropped through that buy signal. Uh, but the previous signals, all five of them were effective, particularly the one that came after they reported earnings in October, had a very volatile day, went up, rallied, made a new high at 38, and then pulled back all the way to 33.50. It takes guts to buy into a drop like that. Wouldn't you agree? Pulling the trigger is one of the hardest things for people to do. It requires a disciplined methodology to be able to pull the trigger. Notice how the check and money flow stayed green even as the stock was dropping from 38. Oops, that's my very overly sensitive mouse. Sorry about that. That's this trick and tip we're going to teach you. When the check and money flow stays green after the stock has had a nice size correction, that's very positive. It means the institutions are not participating in the selling, they're taking advantage of it. So what about avoiding losers? Capital preservation is foremost on everybody's mind. Classic shake and bear, just reverse the process. Power gauge rating is bearish. Stock is underperforming the market, and money flow is red, not green, indicating that the institutions are aggressively selling the stock. We had been using Wynn Resorts as our poster child. We'll actually look at a chart of Wynn later in the presentation, but Kinder Morgan is a stock we've been negative on going all the way back to February of 2015. And starting in May, the power gauge turned bearish and stayed bearish. And the stock started underperforming the market. So now the market was agreeing with the model on the downside. And you got price acceleration to the downside with the institution selling it all the way down. And notice that circled area in yellow. 
the reason I circled that is that Kinder Morgan was down from 44 all the way to 23 when that sell signal happened. Now, a lot of people might have said, too late to sell. Well, my feeling is it's never too late to sell. The energy stocks have been in their own bear market, and in a bear market, nobody knows where the bottom is. So if you had followed that sell signal back in November with Kinder Morgan at 23, you'd be a pretty happy guy today with the stock under 13, making a new low on a day when the market was up when this chart was taken. I was at a conference speaking um, with John Najarian to their Invest Like a Monster audience, and someone came into our booth. My wife Sandy was there, and she just shook her head when she heard the conversation. And we had sold a lot of subscriptions at that point. We're pretty much ready to close up. And the gentleman said, tell me a little more about Chaikin. And I put up Kinder Morgan as an example of what we thought we could do for investors to help them avoid disasters. And he said to me, oh, I'm long Kinder Morgan. And this was back in October. The stock was 28. And I said, are you comfortable riding a stock down from 42 to 28? He said, absolutely. I've researched this stock, and I know that the dividend is strong, and I love the yield. And I said, well, what if they can't pay the dividend uh, because their debt service is so high and they have to cut it? He said, oh, I, I know that the company is solid, and they can keep that dividend going. Well, what I said to this gentleman was, Chaikin Analytics is not for you. Because as with any methodology, if you second guess it, it's going to be worthless. Or even worse, you're going to second guess it at the wrong time. And this was echoed by one of the investors in Chaikin Analytics, who shall go nameless, one of the most successful value investors ever in America built a money management firm which runs over $75 billion today and is retired. He is an investor in Chaikin Analytics, and he emailed me recently and said, Mark, what should I do with my Kinder Morgan? It's one of my largest holdings. So even the most successful investors can be seduced by high yield, by value. Chaikin is sort of your reality test doesn't let you get away with wishful thinking or sticking your head in the sand to avoid reality. When the power gauge is bearish and the relative strength is bearish and money flow is bearish and you get a sell signal, you want to run the other way because that stock is likely to go down and not up. So how do you find these stocks in Chaikin Analytics? Well, we have a list manager in both our iPad and desktop app. This is from the iPad. And we have lists that we call Chaikin Hot Lists. They're generated by computer. One of the buttons in that Chaikin Hot List array is called Power Gauge Hot Lists. And you can see all bullish or bearish stocks and stocks that have turned bullish or bearish this week, which is a very powerful tool to help you zero in on potential ideas for the long and short side. We also have featured bulls and bears where we show stocks that have recently turned bullish or bearish or are classic chicken bulls. So a lot of information. But for those of you who want to customize this based on your criteria, we've introduced a new stock screener. It puts you in the driver's seat. It enables you to determine which of the 20 factors in the chicken power gauge rating you want to zero in on. So in this very simple screen, and we'll demo this in the Q&A uh, with our live desktop app, I started with the Russell 3000 universe. I filtered out low-priced or illiquid stocks. And my requirement was that the power gauge be bullish. So I narrowed the Russell 3000 down to 162 names. And then I cited those factors that we've been talking about, money flow and relative strength requiring that they be strong. And I was looking for stocks that were oversold as potential buy candidates. So we narrowed that 3,000 stock universe down to 19 stocks in literally 10 seconds. And notice that most of these stocks 
are in the utility sector. And as we'll see when we look at the sector rankings, the market is in a very defensive mood. When the market is in a defensive mood, when risk is not considered something that's preferable, people are risk averse, defensive stocks attract money like utilities, food stocks, some healthcare stocks. So interestingly, without even trying, by just requiring that the power gauge be bullish and the two technical indicators be bullish, I was able to narrow this down to 19 stocks. So that's another way that you find ideas in Chaikin. Now, this process of using relative strength and the power gauge rating we call the dynamic duo. It helps you find big winners and losers. But be mindful that relative strength stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator, as we'll see in the chart of Amazon that we're going to look at in a minute. Stocks with overvalued fundamentals or bearish fundamentals can get strong. These are your momentum stocks <clears throat> like Amazon, Tesla for a while, LinkedIn, cloud computing stocks. Even if the power gauge is neutral, they can have big up moves. So it's important to note that and be aware that if you're trading the long side in a stock that doesn't have a bullish power gauge rating, <coughs> excuse me, the likelihood is that relative strength is what's driving the stock. This is what momentum investors look for. So here's an example of a stock where the dynamic duo is strong. First solar, it's probably the premier blue chip in the solar energy sector. It's the one of the only stocks in solar that has a bullish power gauge rating. Many of them have bearish ratings. But the key point here is that the power gauge rating is bullish and relative strength is bullish. Now, how do we know that? It's green and not red. Now, William O'Neill gives you wonderful relative strength rankings by providing a number from 1 to 99. I think numbers contribute to information overload. I prefer pictures. Someone once asked me in an interview, what do you do well? And I said, we convert numbers into pictures and make them usable for investment decision makers, intuitive. So first solar, and we'll see later in the live demo uh, what the solar stocks look like, had a big, big move up. Better than expected earnings, favorable ruling in Congress along with the budget bill extending credits for solar panels, tax credits. And then Goldman Sachs recommended the stock about a week and a half ago, and it spiked up from 65 to 72 because Goldman Sachs has a $100 price target on this stock, and they influence a lot of institutional investors. But in spite of Goldman Sachs, the stock sold off from that big spike to 72 all the way down under 60. Thursday and Friday of last week, this stock sold down to 58.59 presenting an excellent opportunity to buy this stock at our lower volatility band when it was oversold with green positive money flow. And the stock rallied from 58 to 62.20, was up 1.5% earlier today. And as you'll see, many of the solar stocks took big, big hits today, down 8 to 10% or more. So the dynamic duo helps you on the upside and it helps you avoid stocks like Potash, one of the largest fertilizer companies in the world, which dropped from 38 all the way down to 15 in 2015 and to early 16. And the dynamic duo was weak. Power gauge rating bearish, relative strength red, meaning bearish, meaning underperforming. So the market's agreeing with the model. And you had weak check in money flow, so everything lined up. And these money flow sell signals that happen when the money flow is negative and the stock breaks down below a very short-term trend line, think eight-day exponential average. If you rise above it and drop below it and money flow is weak and the power gauge is bearish, everything is lined up. Now, why is that so important? Well, Warren Buffett has famously said that they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street. Therefore, you don't have to swing at every pitch. 
Warren Buffett's idol in life is Ted Williams. Arguably the best hitter ever in baseball unless you're from Cincinnati and think Pete Rose was the best hitter in baseball. But Ted Williams is the last hitter at about 400 and he had a very small strike zone, meaning that he only swung at a pitch that he knew he could drive with high probability. That's why Warren Buffett idolizes him. You can do the same thing in the stock market using this disciplined methodology of Chaikin Analytics. Power gauge, relative strength, and money flow. When they're all lined up, either bullish or bearish, the odds are in your favor. And Warren Buffett would love you if you were buying a first solar, even though it probably violates some of his value metrics. The power gauge is very bullish. They happen to have a very strong balance sheet, so maybe Warren Buffett would like it. Now, the second point in this very disciplined methodology is to focus on strong and weak sectors and industry groups. Studies by Zacks, by Investors Business Daily, by Standard & Poor's, big long white papers have documented the fact that investing in strong stocks and strong industry groups gives you a tailwind and increases your potential to make money on the long side, whereas buying weak stocks and weak industry groups presents you with headwinds and they're actually better shorting opportunities and shorting candidates. So let's look at how Chaikin can help you find the strongest and the weakest stocks in the strongest and weakest sectors and industry groups. So we do something unique. We use that power bar methodology and I like to start the way the big institutions start, top down. That's the way the professionals start their investment process. Everything we've looked at so far is called bottom-up investing, trying to find individual stocks that are going to outperform or underperform the market. Top-down is a methodical approach that starts with the sectors. In this case, we're looking at the nine select spider sector ETFs. Now, how many of you on the webinar tonight trade ETFs, either ETFs like the spider or the triple Qs or sector ETFs like the select spiders? If you do, please type a Y in the question box. And Joe, give me a count of what you're seeing, please. Let's see. If I was going to count all of these, I would probably say three dozen right off the bat, so 30 yeses. All right. And we know a lot of uh, people um, are listening but not at the keyboard. So uh, I'd say that that's a pretty good um, yes vote. So how can Shake and help you? in terms of these select spider sector ETFs. Well, we rank them based on power bars. Right at the top, remember I said the market was in a defensive mode. Utilities, financials, healthcare, along with consumer staples, those are the stocks that typically attract money in uncertain times. So the only one of these nine select spider sector ETFs with more bullish than bearish power gauge ratings are the utility stocks, 12 bullish and zero bearish. Financial is almost at even and then everything else is weak and at the bottom of the list are the usual suspects, energy, materials, industrials. These are the sectors that are most affected by this decompression in commodity prices. So what do you do with this? Well, first of all, we let you chart these sectors and also industry groups. So I'm going to zero in on the XLK, the Spider Technology Select Sector ETF. Only four bullish stocks, 16 bearish. But the chart actually looks pretty good. This is the chart as of probably 12 o'clock this afternoon. And the XLK was up even though energy and materials were down at that point and this stock, this chart looks a heck of a lot better than the S&P itself and certainly better than the IWM but the key thing here is to look at the relative strength indicator we notice that the power gauge rating is gray we are working on a very very important project major project that will result in power gauge ratings for ETFs and we hope to have that available early in the second quarter. 
so that that will not be gray. It'll be red, green, or yellow, just like it is for an individual stock. But for now, we have a really important indicator because relative strength is so important. The technology stocks, the XLK itself, have been outperforming the market since late August. So let's look at a couple of technology stocks. <clears throat> and one of our favorites has been Google. Why? Because the market and the model have been in agreement. So we had that dynamic duo working. Um, and the rating has turned neutral because the stock has dropped below this important long-term trend line and stayed there. But look what happened today with a hint of a rally in the market at midday or at 1 o'clock, Google was up almost 2%. So Google is the type of stock that represents the best of breed in the technology XLK ETF. Apple, on the other hand, which is on everybody's mind because it's the most widely owned stock, has a neutral power gauge rating, but very negative relative strength and money flow. And because of that, we've had a number of relative strength breakdown signals. And notice that Apple was down half of 1% when Google was up 1.75%. That's the difference between very bullish stocks and stocks that are not bullish. But the key here is that money flow on Apple has been negative except for the bounce in October where everything picked up buying going all the way back to March, just after it was put into the Dow Jones averages. People ask us about Apple all the time, and my first response is, everybody who wants to own Apple already owns it. It's over-owned. And when people sell and liquidate the spiders, Uh, so running, and I apologize for the interruption. Uh, my point here was that if you're going to buy a technology stock, focus on Apple, on, on Google rather, and not Apple. Now let's look at the retailers. Terrible time for retail stocks. Amazon is eating their lunch. People are buying online. And by the way, if you can hear me now, please type a Y in the question box so I know that most of you are back up along with us, and I apologize for that dislocation. So here's the XRT, the S&P Retail ETF. Started underperforming the market in July. That immediately tells me I want to avoid retail stocks. Energy stocks started underperforming the market in August of 2014 and have been underperforming the market ever since. 
So what you have here is an indication that you want to avoid retail stocks, and then these relative strength sell signals that come when the stock or the ETF trades above its 21-day average, has negative relative strength, and then drops back below its 21-day average. Relative strength sell signals, very powerful, as are the buys. They tend to last for four to eight weeks. So they're great for swing trading, and they're great spots to initiate a position on the long or short side. So let's look at a couple of retail stocks. Macy's. Right before earnings were released, we had a money flow sell signal. Terrible distribution on the part of institutions. They've been selling this stock since June. Power gauge rating was bearish, underperforming the market. Great chance to sell that stock at about $48. And when earnings disappointed, the stock went all the way to 36 Now, I circled in yellow what Macy's did today, up almost 4%, because an activist ingress investor, Greenlight Capital, has established a position in Macy's. Should you be buying the stock? Well, everything that Chaikin has to offer says no. Do activist investors sometimes make a difference? Yes, but rarely in the short term. So there's plenty of time to buy Macy's if these activist investors are going to make a difference. Now let's look at Tiffany. Very timely. Tiffany has had a bearish rating, and today they lowered their guidance, which means they're telling Wall Street that their results are going to disappoint when they report earnings. But you didn't have to wait to hear that from Tiffany because the power gauge rating has been bearish all year. And the stock is breaking to new lows. Look what happened on December 31st. The stock was overbought right at year end. Trading above 78, 77.50 to 78, and it gave a relative strength sell signal when it dropped back below its 21-day average at a price of 76.29. Trading today down 4% at 65 and likely to go a lot lower. This is what happens when you follow the discipline, and we're going to end the session on a defensive note, showing you how to play defense to preserve capital and also make money in a down market. Now, energy, the final sector we're going to look at, been underperforming the market since late August of 2014, continues to underperform. You don't get sucked into the rallies if you follow that relative strength. And here are two examples, range resources. Power gauge rating went bearish on range resources in February of 2014, almost two years ago. And the stocks had rallies along the way, but I don't care because I'm going to follow the power gauge discipline and the relative strength and not get sucked into those rallies because inevitably reality sets in and the institutions come back and start selling the stock. Now, I've circled in yellow the last sell signal, the last relative strength sell signal. The reason I circled that is because at 23 down from 65, you might have thought, or 24 and a half actually, that it was too late to sell range resources. Well, Range Resources made a 3% drop today down to 21.25, almost made a new low, probably will in the next couple of days. It's never too late to sell a stock. But if you follow the power gauge discipline, you would have been out of the stock in the 45.50 range. You might have um, regretted it when the stock rallied above 60, but then you avoided all the pain of watching the stock go from 60, just like the fellow who rode Kinder Morgan down from 42 to 14. You didn't have to worry night in and night out about what to do with range resources as it was dropping from 64 all the way down to 20. Now, the third step in this discipline methodology is to focus on something we call personality changes and a very unique way to use check and money flow to anticipate volatile moves. Now, we think it's very important to spot personality changes. It's the key to making and keeping profits. And we define a personality change as a stock that goes from outperforming to underperforming the market or vice versa. And the worst thing that you can do as a trader 
for an investor is to put your feet in cement and be on the wrong side of that door when Jack Nicholson comes through with the axe because that's what happens when you don't spot personality changes. So here are a couple of examples. Valero in the energy sector, the refiners in 2014 and 2015 have been the only strong area of the energy patch. And the reason is very logical. They benefit from the low price of crude oil. So Tesoro had a bullish power gauge rating almost all through 2014, the only energy stock in the S&P 500. And Valero followed suit in 2015 with the stock at about 48, the power gauge turned bullish, and the price performance peaked at about 73. And basically, it's still outperforming the market, still good with the money flow and still likely to rebound when and if the market rebounds. But the key is to spot that personality change. Now on the downside, here's Union Pacific. Now the rails are really important. You hear a lot on CNBC yes, today and into the future about whether or not the weakness in all the rail stocks means that the economy is heading into a recession. Well. The reason the rails are weak is because they move a lot of oil and coal around, and the industrial economy in the U.S. is more reflected by the rails. But we're a service-oriented economy. 88% of our gross national product derives from areas other than manufacturing. But if you spotted that personality change in Union Pacific back in March when the stock was 110, you would have spared yourself the agony of watching it go to 74 along with CSX which reported negative earnings recently, Kansas City Southern, Canadian Pacific, all the railroad stocks, Norfolk and Southern which potentially has a takeover bid on the table, suffered declines like this. There's commonality, that's why group and sector analysis is so important. And then finally we alluded to Amazon. Amazon had a bearish power gauge rating to start 2015 and the power gauge rating on Amazon has just gone bearish again. Along the way the stock had a personality change because relative strength went from underperforming to outperforming and Amazon had a huge move from 350 all the way up close to 700. But Amazon is very richly valued. Depending on how you compute earnings, if they have them, P-E ratio of 800 huge market cap, no dividend, investing for growth. That's a good thing if you end up making money along the way. So be aware that if you're trading a stock like Amazon, even before the power gauge turns bearish, the institutions were selling it up at the top. How do we know that? When it made its all-time high here back in December, the, the taken money flow was negative, and we're going to pinpoint what that means in the next set of slides. But now the power gauge has turned bearish, and this is a stock that I would look to sell on rallies. Stock rallies up to 590 or 600. Excellent opportunity to get out of the stock or buy put options. And by the way, we're not recommending these as specific ideas. They're meant to be informational. We share them with you in our market letter. We're not registered with any state or federal agency. So this is for educational purposes, meant to give you my perspective and point you in the right direction. Now the final technical piece of the puzzle is check and money flow. And we've detected a pattern that we call stealth buying and selling because institutions are so large that they can't execute all their orders on the same day and they don't want you to know what they're doing. They're afraid, almost paranoid, that hedge funds will get in the way of their trades. So we've detected along over the years a pattern that we call stealth accumulation and stealth distribution. My colleague John Schlitz put a label on it. And here's an example of it in Red Hat, the open source Unix software provider. As the stock was going sideways here in November and December, institutions kept buying it. And you got an over sold buy signal in the middle of that with the money flow positive. So that's a buy down there at 
78 and the stock made a new high at 84 but notice what happened to the money flow just as with Amazon when the stock made its new all-time high the money flow should have been green and it was red telling you that this was a great spot to take your profits if you were wise enough to follow the discipline of buying bullish power gauge positive relative strength and positive shake in money flow Nordstrom's on the other hand in that very weak retail sector retail group the XRT is that retail ETF exhibited what we call stealth distribution as the stock was rallying three or four times back in July, August, and September, look at the money flow. The institutions were not buying the stock. They were selling under the cover of strength. We call that stealth distribution, and if you get a signal in that period, in this case our reversal sell signal, fabulous opportunity to get out of that stock along with the institutions. Now, Right before earnings, Macy's had reported we had a sell signal on Macy's. Nordstrom was reported two days later, a day later rather, and look what happened. Bearish earnings surprise. That's one of the factors in the model. Stock went from about 64 to 50 and has continued lower, making new lows almost every day. That's what happens when the institutions are selling and the stock is underperforming the market with a bearish power gauge rating. You want to get out of these stocks before they blow up and destroy your portfolio. Now here's a more recent example. Twitter, after a negative earnings report in April, went sideways for three months until the next negative earnings report. And in that three-month period, guess what happened? Chaken money flow stayed negative never turn positive and you got sell signals money flow sell signals to give you low risk exit points spots to buy put options and those sell signals have persisted with money flow still relatively negative but the key here is you had a bearish personality change the power gauge was bearish you could have been out of Twitter between 35 and 38 and not have to endure the pain and the anxiety and the worry of thinking what to do with this stock as it makes a new low today at 17 down 4% on an up day in the market barely up at the end but up <clears throat> this is what the discipline can do for you this is how you preserve capital this is how you recognize personality changes and don't stick your feet in cement and stay wedded to a stock like Twitter when the market is telling you that you shouldn't be in that stock on the long side you should be shorting that stock now as we get deeper into this discipline methodology there is a very powerful set of possibilities in earnings season where you can turn volatility into profits so I like to zero in on winning plays during earnings season now Netflix which reported today and uh, I think reported a better than expected quarter a year ago in October of 14 reported a disappointing quarter when it had a bearish power gauge rating it has a bearish power gauge rating today they didn't disappoint but I'm seeing that it's it's backing off a bit it was trading as high as 124 after hours it's only 115 now still up on the day very nicely but back in 2014 if you had followed that sell signal that overbought sell signal right before earnings you could have made 50 times in out of the money puts that's a little bit aggressive but someone who was following Chaikin a recent subscriber I might add at that point said quick $21,500 profit using the upcoming earnings ideas in Chaikin Analytics that's one of our hot lists Netflix had a very bearish rating I bought three put contracts before earnings and sold them a few days later for a $21,500 profit and that testimonial and testimonials like that gets repeated over and over again. So here are some examples of stocks that we talked about on webinars and tweeted about and written about as bullish or bearish stocks during earnings season. American Woodmark, which right now is breaking down uh, in this selling squall, was very bullish for over a year and a half and kept reporting positive earnings surprises. It did it in November after the stock had dropped 10% the day, the two days preceding earnings, and they reported blowout 
earnings better than expected, raised their guidance, and the stock, which had bottomed out at 64, rallied all the way up to 87. Now the stock's in a downtrend, picking up negative money flow. It's neutral power gauge rating, starting to underperform, so it's no longer a stock that I would trade during earnings season. It's the third largest manufacturer of kitchen cabinets in America. And they're being hurt by the perception that housing is going to be hurt by rising interest rates. Whole Foods, love to shop there, hate the stock. Back in July, we had a relative strength sell signal ahead of earnings. The stock dropped because earnings disappointed from 40 all the way down to 30 over a two-week period. A very nice put trade. And by the way, they had also reported a negative earnings surprise back in April. So these patterns repeat over and over and over again. And Whole Foods made another new low today or equaled its previous low of 29. So these trends persist. We were vacationing in Vail thanks to the profitable trading that my wife is, Sandy has had using Chaikin Analytics, never a stock trader in her life until three years ago when she started using Chaikin Analytics. So we were in Vail and I tweeted after Whole Foods reported uh, and Sprouts farmers markets would do to report that Sprouts would probably report a negative earnings surprise because Whole Foods, the largest player in that natural organic food space had reported negative numbers. If the big dog reports negative numbers, the litter is not going to be good. And I actually got flamed on Twitter for that. Someone said, what idiot would make a recommendation on Sprouts based on what Whole Foods did? Well, Sprouts had a bearish power gauge rating, and this idiot, Mark Chaikin, was right. The stock reported a negative earnings surprise, dropped 15%. I've never heard from that Twitter poster again. Follow the discipline. It works. Does it work every time? Of course not. Does it work methodically more often than not? Yes, it does. And if you follow these disciplines, you can make money during earnings season. Here's Yelp. Three negative earnings surprises in a row. First in the beginning of 2015, and then again in late April. So that when we got a sell signal, Money flow sell in July, two days or three days ahead of earnings. We made this our bearish stock of the week. And this stock dropped 28% when they reported a negative earnings surprise. So there's an example of what you can do during earnings season if you just follow the indicators, follow the discipline. Bearish power gauge, underperforming the market, negative money flow, and a sell signal. It doesn't get any better than that. These trades can be extremely profitable. And then finally, we're going to end the webinar by talking about playing good defense, avoiding the landmines that can destroy your portfolio. And by the way, good defense also leads to good offense. Herb Greenberg, who used to write for CNBC and thestreet.com, is now running a professional service finding short candidates. But he wrote a column in January 2014 that made a big impact on me because it encapsulated what I've always believed. It's the stocks you don't own that matter. Now, what he meant by that was if you can avoid a few losers every year in your portfolio, you're going to do a world of good to your bottom line. So let's look at some examples of playing good defense. Chipotle. Uh, Sad but true that a, a very good company is being destroyed by E. coli bacteria. The power gauge was actually bearish just before the first instance of E. coli. It had turned bearish two days before. I don't know if there was a leak to the analyst community, but the factors in the power gauge conspired against it. And then you gap down to 650. And someone might have thought from 650 down from 750 that it was too late to sell the stock, but it's dropped all the way to 400. 
since October. And along the way, we got that money flow sell signal, which gave you a heads up that you should sell the stock if you were late in recognizing the personality change. Don't be stubborn. Or a great opportunity to buy put options. Imagine how you'd feel if you'd bought put options on Chipotle at 610 when that money flow sell signal came up with the power gauge bearish and the relative strength bearish. Everything lined up in your favor. Money flow was negative. And the stock rallied here because they announced a gimmick, which is to close the stores for a day so that their staff could regroup. But the stock was down almost 3% earlier today, and it's going to take a long time to rebuild confidence. Who wants to risk their health by eating in a Mexican restaurant with an E. coli bacteria floating around? Jim Cramer said on TV he went and took his daughter into a uh, a Chipotle restaurant in Boston where she goes to school and there was nobody else in there. They walked out. I don't know if he was doing market research. I hope he wasn't planning to dine there. And you play good defense by avoiding stocks like Wynn Resorts in the casino business. Bearish power gauge rating for almost two years. It turned bearish at 185. And the reason I've circled these sell signals is that it's never too late to sell a stock where everything's lined up against you. And Wynn just made a new low two days ago. It was up yesterday. It bounced 3% today. Do you want to follow that bounce? Absolutely not. Don't get sucked in by someone on CNBC saying, well, maybe it's time for the casino stocks to rally here. Maybe they're not good enough. That's why we've developed this discipline methodology. When you get that signal, if you haven't already sold the stock, sell it. If you're out of it, as we would hope you would be, then look at that as a put buying opportunity. And then finally, we talked about solar stocks. First solar was up today. Sun Edison is the prototypical example of a stock that Chaikin can do wonderful things for you. If you like solar, is this the place you wanted to be? Absolutely not. Bearish power gauge, personality change when the stock broke down below 26, started underperforming the market. And then look, all the way down, the institutions were selling it. So that when it got overbought at the 21-day average, couldn't even rally through it to get a relative strength sell signal. Money flow was negative. It was overbought. Bearish power gauge underperforming the market, perfect put candidate. If you're still long the stock, it's never too late to sell it. You could have sold that stock at $11, $10.50. And look what it did today. It was down an additional 10% to 249 The sell signal down here at the right hand of the chart came at roughly $5. And the stock is down 50% in two and a half weeks since that relative strength sell signal. The discipline works if you apply it methodically, if you don't second guess it. And then finally, a slide that shows you that even the smartest people on Wall Street, because whatever you think of Jim Cramer and his antics, he is very smart. I, one of the slides in the beginning of the presentation showed you that we've gotten a lot of good publicity. We've been on Fox Business and CNBC. But just because we're on Fox Business doesn't mean you should follow us blindly or CNBC. Because look at what Jim Cramer said back in September when the chairman of La Quinta said, oops, it was sort of a Governor Perry moment. He said, we're going to come in much lower than expected in terms of earnings. And Jim Cramer, who had been promoting the CEO and the stock, said, now look, I got La Quinta wrong, mea culpa. I should have been more skeptical and less willing to believe the CEO's exuberant bullishness. And if there weren't so many women on the webinar, I would have replaced bullishness with what it really should have been because the CEO was conning Jim Cramer. So the stock spiked down. He made that comment with the stock at about 16. And look what happened. It rallied for two weeks. Wall Street is ever hopeful and triggered an overbought sell signal when it made an eight-day high. And then when the earnings came out, Reality set in. The CEO told you it was going to be bad, and they were. 
and the stock spiked down from over 16 to 13 and it's continued lower it was trading at 11 15 a new low yet again today so even the experts can be wrong and that's why we created Chaikin Power Gauge for individuals because if Jim Cramer were following the Chaikin Power Gauge do you think he would have been second guessing the CEO probably would have by the way he does follow Chaikin Money Flow he's referenced it a lot um, our good friend and partner Bob Lang from Explosive Options is on the show once a month and he's been talking about Jake and Money Flow and Jim Cramer, who used to be a client of ours, has started using it in his technical segment. So even the experts can be wrong, and that's why we created Jake and Analytics. It's a reality check. It's an impartial, independent, third-party rating of the fundamental potential of a stock, and when you combine that with two simple technicals, you've got what you need to be independent of talking heads and barons and so forth. So now you know this discipline methodology. The question is, what do you need to do next to apply this? Well, your next steps to success start with signing up for Chaikin Analytics today and reserving your professional training session. Joe Bacello, who's our success manager, who's spearheading today's webinar, organizes professional training sessions almost every day where we teach you what's in the system and how to use it. You start getting our weekly and daily market insights, my weekly newsletter where we feature a bullish and bearish stock of the week and we've been pretty cautious for the last four weeks, more than pretty cautious. And in the daily letter John Schlitz tells you when the futures are down a thousand points and the market's likely to open lower. But most importantly your next step to success is to apply the Chaikin methodology to your nest egg today. So Chaikin Analytics can be your GPS in volatile markets and it now includes our stock screener and a very powerful module that we've licensed from a company called Options Play which gives you options ideas based on probabilities that takes a lot of the drudgery out of options trading. So for those of you who trade options, options play has been added to Chaikin Analytics at no additional cost. Here's an example of how I used options play in our first market insights in January and January 3rd comes out weekly. I was bearish on the Russell 2000 ETF, the IWM, as we saw earlier in the presentation, and I used options play to zero in on a put strategy, a vertical put spread, buying the 113 put and selling the February 108 put. That strategy had a potential return of almost 200 percent and with the Russell 2000 dropping from 112 under 100, that profit potential has been realized. But options play is now integrated into Chaikin Analytics. And we got this wonderful testimonial from a subscriber thank you for making my life easier. I'm writing to tell you how absolutely incredible Chaikin Analytics has become. It started great, but with the options and screener additions, I feel it's absolutely the best product on the market. I've recommended your product to all my investing friends. It doesn't get any better than this. So Chaikin Analytics for desktop and iPad is normally $1,950 a year. But we've got a special webinar price that expires on Thursday, January 21st. We're taking $200 off the cost of Chaikin Analytics, reducing it to $1,750. And you can go to our order page right now and order Chaikin Analytics, www.chaikinanalytics.com backslash smart. You want to start investing smarter right now. Or contact sales at chaikinanalytics.com. Joe, I'm sure you're typing the link into the chat box where you can go there right now and that discount is pre-populated. It's good through Thursday the 21st. And it helps you turbocharge your profits if you subscribe and you get $995 in added value. Now what do I mean by that? Well, we have a separate product that sells the market insights, our research reports, and our portfolio health check 
The list price for that is $495 a year, and Options Play, if you were to buy it separately through Options Play, would cost you $500 a year, so $995 in added value. <coughs> Excuse me. You get the weekly newsletter, the daily market insights in your email, stock screener and options play fully integrated, free small group coaching to help you learn and use all the features. That's so critical. Joe Bacella does such a great job with that and his team. And free subscriber only open forums twice a month where you can dial in on a Monday to go to webinar and ask questions and hear other people's questions and what the answers are. We got this testimonial from a money manager. Mark, I make a living trading and you're an important part of my trading process. My results have never been better thanks to you. The edge and confidence I get in my trading is greatly enhanced with the use of Chaken Analytics. A serious trader looking for increased productivity, confidence, an added edge will find your service invaluable as I have. That's really what this webinar is all about. It's confidence and conviction and having an edge. If you have an edge and follow a methodology, you'll be trading and investing with conviction. You'll pull the trigger when you should and you'll enjoy consistent profits in bull and bear markets. So we alluded to the fact that Yelp was one of our bear stocks of the week. You've already seen the chart. We got this testimonial netted 17,400 in profits this morning. This is Mike T was someone who had been using Chaken for only two weeks when the Yelp bearish play surfaced in July. I found more success in the past two weeks using Chaken than I've had the rest of the year. I had the biggest winner of the year today on Yelp earnings based on Mark's bearish play of the week. I risked 7,000 net at 17,000. Now Mike actually sent us his trading blotter, I think this is from Interactive Brokers, showing you the profit he made. Now with our options play module, even those of you who are not experienced options traders like Mike T can find winning put and call positions, disciplined, probability-based ideas, in the same way that the power gauge puts the probabilities on your side. So if all Chaken Analytics could do was to help you avoid the retail stocks and the energy stocks, to avoid the Macy's and the Nordstrom's and the Tiffany's and the range resources of the world, how much would that be worth to you? If all Chaken Analytics could do was to point you in the direction of First Solar and away from Sun Edison, wouldn't that be worth more than the cost of the subscription of $1,750? If you believe, as I do, that that is the case, the question I'd like you to ask yourself is, will you be our next success story? Will your testimonial be in my next webinar deck? If you subscribe today, that's likely to happen. And to give you an added incentive to, to subscribe to Chaken Analytics today, obviously I feel very passionately about this, We've got a fast action bonus. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'll take an additional $100 off, reducing the cost of Chaken Analytics to $1,650. And we're going to give you a special bonus. For everybody who subscribes by midnight tonight, we'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one telephone conference call with me after you've gotten your training in the system. So. This is as compelling as I can make it. I think in volatile times, and I came out of retirement to start Chaken Analytics. It's the culmination of my life's work. I didn't have to do it. I did it to help individuals like you, options traders like you, because I felt passionately in 2009 that these tools were needed as people were taking back control of their own financial futures. We're in another f phase maybe not like 2008, of high pessimism and high tension, high anxiety, if you will. You need tools like this. That's why we're giving you this fast action bonus. $1,650 if you subscribe by midnight tonight, $300 discount, and a one-on-one -on -one phone call. They typically range from a half hour to about 40 minutes. 
The only thing we won't do is make specific recommendations, but anything about Chaikin or your strategies, what's helped you, what's hurt you, where anywhere I can make a difference in your trading or your investing is fair game on these webinars. So with that, I'm going to thank everybody who stayed with us through that technical glitch and turn it back over to Joe Bacella for Q&A where we're going to look at the real-time version of Chaikin Analytics and answer any questions that you have. All right. Excellent. Well, Mark, great job so far. Um, again, this is the opportunity where we can now demonstrate the full program. So keep your questions coming if you do have anything uh, that's been on your mind regarding Chaikin Analytics, and we'll be happy to go in detail about them. Uh, we've received a few stock requests, and there was a good amount of interest, Mark, in some of the solar stocks that you mentioned, uh, specifically Solar City. Would you mind taking a few that taking a look at a few that have really uh, piqued your interest recently? Well, this is a good place to start, Joe, because um, the solar group is very mixed in terms of power gauge ratings and price performance. So I created a small list of widely followed solar stocks, five in all. Uh, with fairly decent market caps. And the only one with a bullish power gauge rating is First Solar, and we've already covered that. And that was up today. I pulled this list late in the day. It was still up even when the market was negative. The second stock on the list, Jaw Solar Holdings, had had a bullish power gauge rating, was outperforming the market, still is, but it broke down technically uh, through our long-term trend line but notice what happened, up 7% today. The three stocks with bearish power gauge ratings are absolute proof that you need Chaikin Analytics if you're going to tread in volatile waters, which inevitably new industries like solar entail. Sun Edison down 10% today. Solar City is a very interesting stock had had a bearish power gauge rating. We encourage people in our weekly newsletter to get out of this stock. It was a bearish stock of the week back in September. The stock took a huge tumble. And then that bill passed Congress with a rider on it. The budget bill that they passed in Congress in November had a rider that extended the tax credits for solar panels. And look what happened to Solar City. The stock went from under 20 to $60. Now the power gauge rating would have said don't go near this stock. And now let's look what's happened. The stock has fallen all the way back to 31 because the reality is that they're playing games with their balance sheet. They're buying solar power and they're selling it to a subsidiary or to a related company called Terraform Power which also has a bearish power gauge rating and was down 8% today. This group does more to convince me that I'm on the right track trying to convince you to use the Chaikin methodology because the only place to be in solar based on the power gauge rating and the relative strength is either First Solar or JASO, which has a neutral plus rating, meaning that the factors are bullish but the technical trend is weak. So here's what the factors look like. This is JA Solar. Strong financials. What does that mean? Well, price to sales ratio is reasonable. High return on equity, price to book, reasonable. These are the Warren Buffett metrics. Same is true with First Solar. Even more so. Price to book, very strong. It's got a very strong balance sheet, very little debt. Now, when you take a look at Solar City, controlled by Elon Musk, here's where the power gauge does the heavy lifting for you. Look at the financials on Solar City. Too much debt, too expensive in relationship to book value. Return on equity is nil because they don't earn any money. Price to sales ratio off the charts. How do we know that? Well, let's go over here. Price to sales ratio not available. It's not clear what their revenues are. So do you want to guess and be in a stock like Solar City? The answer is no. Joe, what other um, 
questions on stocks or on the system do we have? So I know there's a few requests for, um, there's one actually for American Woodmark, and I know we, we spoke about this one here, uh, but there was a question, there were some periods where there was negative money flow. Uh, would you mind referencing uh, how you can manage a position, obviously if it's consistently bullish like American Woodmark, and what do you do when you do have times where uh, money flow does, does go negative? Well, money flow, which I created back in the early 80s, normally fluctuates between red to green and back again. It looks back over a 21-day period and it attempts to measure, and it does it very well, the institutional footprints in the sands, what the elephants are doing. But it's normal for money flow to get negative when the stock declines. So we saw that in late September. That shouldn't spook you out of a stock as long as it's outperforming the market. Now, with American Woodmark having broken through our long-term support line and our volatility bands and picking up negative money flow, this stock is going to have a hard time rallying. So one of the things that I like to say is sell on strength, particularly when the negative money flow is there. When money flow is not green at a high, that's a warning sign. But if you're still in American Woodmark, this is a stock you want to get out of on strength, in my opinion, because the money flow is weak and it's starting to underperform the market. And it was down another 2.5% today. People have soured on the home furnishing stocks. Lennar is a case in point. If you make kitchen cabinets and you're supplying companies in the building industry that are out of favor with investors right now, they're going to look to the suppliers like Lennar and Owens Corning. And that's starting to break down. And that had a very bullish power gauge rating. In the building products business, probably a stock that you don't want to be in because it's going to be painted with the same brush as Lennar and Toll Brothers and American Woodmark. People have soured on the home building stocks. Look at that. Making new lows. You just don't want to be in stocks making new lows. Power gauge had been bullish. There's your personality change. That's what you want to look for. In this mid-30 area, you have the warning from the personality change that Toll Brothers had had a, per had a change of character. It was going from outperforming to underperforming. And the power gauge was neutral at the time. Joe, what else can we show the folks? I think yeah. I'd actually like to show the screener. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Tell so us something. Go ahead. Here's the screener. Let's say you want to emulate Warren Buffett. We're starting with the Russell 3000. I'm going to turn my filter on because Warren Buffett doesn't buy illiquid stocks with market caps below 500,000, 5 million, 500 million rather. So I'm turning the screener on and I'm looking for stocks in the Russell with liquidity and a bullish power gauge rating. I click screen and I've narrowed the universe down to 162 names. Now let's apply Warren Buffett's two favorite indicators, free cash flow and price to sales ratio. He doesn't like to pay too much for a dollar of revenue. And now that 66 has been reduced to 44. How easy was that? How fast was that? There's a lot of good names on there. A lot of stocks that are showing up on value lists and growth lists, some of the banks. But let's narrow it down even further using the two favorite shaken technicals, relative strength and money flow, and we're going to get a very tight list of only three stocks. So I'm going to look at money flow in a different way, and I'm going to look back over three months to find persistent accumulation, and now the list widens out to seven names. Tyson's Foods has been a market leader. It dropped today. Could represent a buying opportunity. Now, what you can do is save that as a list. So, webinar, Buffett buys. And it's now going to take you back to the workspace with that list populated. And you can loop through all these charts. Our goal is to make it easy, not hard. Right stock. So Dean Foods, Lidos, which is in the aerospace business and doing quite well, finding support down here 
at the moving average up 2.2% on the day after getting oversold. Let's see if it gave us a buy signal. Oversold buy. Well, if you created a list of potential buy candidates, then you can follow the alert manager to see if any of them have given buy signals coming into a given trading session. Bullish or bearish. No buy signals today. A couple of trend alerts, stocks that have crossed under their trend. All integrated, fully integrated. ORI, insurance company, doing quite well. Also gave an oversold buy signal two days ago. Tyson's Foods, down 3.5% today, testing support, very bullish money flow. This might be a good buy. Well, let's say you wanted to put on an options position on Tyson's. It's going to assume you're bullish because the power gauge is bullish, so it's fully integrated. And it's not showing any good probability trades. Nothing really has a green circle and a check mark to indicate good probability. So let's look at the probability distribution that this is based on. Remember, this is all math driven. So if we think that Tyson's can rally dramatically, we still don't find a good options position using this probability based approach. The best it can come up with is that you're better off buying the stock than trading an option. Now, if you were bearish on Tyson's, it would find a bearish put spread, the 4550 March put spread, because it typically looks out 45 days as your best candidate. So you can overrule the assumption and say, I'm bearish on Tyson's, not bullish. I don't care what the power gauge relative strength and money flow are saying. We know from examples we've chosen that if you second guess the power gauge, you're probably not going to be a winner in the long run, but there is no high probability options trade right now based on the options play module. But that's how simple it is to find one if there was one. So let's go back to First Solar and see if there's an interesting options trade if you want to be bullish on First Solar. So we're loading the options play module. I could have kept it up there. And here again, because of the probabilities, it's not finding a good options trade. Now, in this case, because I think First Solar can rally way up because it was just 72 and it's now trading around 61, I can change my probability assumptions and say, I think that First Solar could trade up to $80 by March. And suddenly, it, if this is February, actually, if First Solar had a big rally, that's probably a little bit wild assumption. You could make money buying the February 61 call. What this is telling you is that the options are very expensive on First Solar. Now, there is something built into this that I think is very important. If you click on the trade button, there's a strategy checklist. It's not actually putting in a trade. It's telling you what order to enter. And it basically finds some bullish or bearish things to like. If we go back to their original assumptions, which is one standard deviation move over, because this has been such a volatile stock, and then we look at the trade button to find the strategy checklist, we'll find that the bid-ask spread is very large and it's not liking the options play score because of the excessive amount of risk in the premiums here. So options play module simplifies options trading. It demystifies it. You don't have to look through options chains and Greeks and arcane terminology. It explains it in plain English. So that's just an example of how fully integrated the Chaikin methodology is right now. Joe, I think we'll take one more question. I want to show the portfolio health check mm. because it's a really powerful. Um, actually, I'm going to show something else. Here's another validation of the system. On December 7th, First Trust Portfolios, which is the largest creator of unit investment trusts and a very big player in ETFs, rolled out the Chaikin Low Beta Growth Portfolio Series 1 Unit Investment Trust. 
they asked us to create a portfolio to help them create a portfolio of stocks without bearish power gauge ratings with bullish ratings and they rolled that out on December 7th so, uh, since December 7th it's down as everything is but it's outperforming the S&P by over a hundred basis points so it's doing its job it's an all-weather portfolio and I can actually monitor this using our portfolio health check as you can any list or index in the system and I see the strong bullish rated stocks in there on the right side of the grid if I go to a larger list like my stocks which has 150 names in it and do a portfolio health check I can see the very strong stocks in the S&P the banks the insurance companies some of the software stocks and then I can see the weak stocks the cloud computing stocks like Demandware and Splunk Zillow and LinkedIn in the internet commerce space and then down here the real dogs weak stocks and weak industry groups the ones we use Union Pacific Potash Whole Foods Sprouts these are all the stocks we used as examples range resources that's how we find them when Royal Caribbean which had been very strong is now weak you want to avoid weak stocks in weak industry groups so Joe one more question and I think we'll shut it down and put that offer back up how about showing some opportunities where, where you can find earnings ideas I'm thinking about the uh, chicken hot list okay you can do it in the screener but let's go to the chicken hot lists Joe does this all day long so he knows what investors are interested in chicken hot lists earnings hot lists and then upcoming earnings ideas so these are all the stocks that were due to report earnings this week and you can sort them in our panel view by percent change for the day or by rating so if you're looking for put plays you're looking at the bearish stocks in here like Xilinx Union Pacific Schlumberger Kansas City Southern Kinder Morgan down another three and a half percent today ahead of earnings very powerful stuff the ability to zero in on potential opportunities during earnings season now if you're bullish and it's hard to be trading the long side during earnings season with the market as shaky as it's been you want to look for stocks with bullish power gauge ratings that might give you an upside earnings surprise but be careful because if they disappoint they're going to get taken to the cleaners but the ability to find these stocks very quickly using our upcoming earnings ideas is very powerful so with that Joe I'm going to turn it back to you put the offer slide back up with this special bonus good till midnight tonight 1650 and a one-on-one -on -one phone call with me after you've gotten your training so Joe why don't you wrap it up for the folks please Excellent. Well, great. Uh, great job, Mark. Uh, everyone, thank you very much for sticking around for our presentation today. Uh, just like Mark mentioned, uh, the best way to get in touch with us really is to begin your subscription now. Uh, we host our daily subscriber sessions every afternoon, the next one tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, we'd love to have you with us. Um, I know there were a lot of questions, unfortunately, we weren't able to get to, but those sessions tomorrow at 2 o'clock as a subscriber would be a great place to get those voiced. Um, so we'll love to have you again, 1650 for a full year to check in analytics. Um, give us a phone call at 877-697-6783, or you can go right to our website, shakenanalytics.com, and for the uh, special bonus, uh, forward slash smart. Um, so have a great evening, everyone. We're looking forward to being in touch with you, obviously turning around your performance from 2015 and leading into a better year for 2016. We'll see you soon.